Hey there YouTube, welcome back. My name is Brian and this is Fab Automotive Detailing. Today, I'm gonna show you the torque wrenches that I use. Let's do it. So these are all the torque wrenches that I own. We're gonna start down here. All three of these are Harbor Freight torque wrenches. These are the torque wrenches that I relied on for several years when I first started having to buy my own tools. I got a quarter inch Harbor Freight torque wrench and it is in inch pounds. That's why I wanted that one. And it's, yeah, teeth are okay on it. I couldn't tell you how many teeth are actually in it. And it goes up to 200 inch pounds. And inch pounds are used a lot on uh, timing belt jobs, especially on your foreign cars, Japanese makers, Toyotas and Hondas. Um, I really can't think of anything else. That's usually what I use inch pounds on are timing belts. And then you have their 3H, 3 8 version. I'm hopefully getting this in the camera. 3 8 it is foot pounds and it goes to 80 foot pounds. And one thing I need to mention, if you own any torque wrenches, when you're done using them, always take it all the way down. It takes the stress off of the spring. The, when you leave it on the spring, that's when you start losing your accuracy on your torque wrench, when you leave pressure on your spring, when you put it back in your toolbox. And then a Harbor Freight uh, half inch, and it goes to 150 foot pounds. And like I said, I relied on these for several years before I bought my other ones. No issues at all for a do-it-yourself or a home. These are great little torque wrenches. And that one's got pretty big teeth in it for that half inch. I didn't do that to the 3 eighths. Not too bad on that one. And I want to say, and don't quote me on this, these aren't that expensive. I think they're somewhere in the 10 to 20 dollar range a piece is what they cost they don't come in any cases or anything and then i updated my half inch because i needed something with a lot more leverage as you can see to this this is a cobalt comes in a blow molded case this is zero i'm sorry it starts at 50 and goes to 250 foot pounds hopefully i can get this all on the screen that's a big torque wrench i love it i use it quite often you pull this little sleeve down that's the lock and you just twist it and turn it to take it to where you want it and then once it's locked it's locked i don't know if you guys heard that or not let's do that again it pops up it's locked it's not going to spin on you these seem to these little screws here you screw in they seem to get loose on you it's something you can deal with but this right here i think is 80 dollars at uh, lowe's and this this is a very nice torque wrench I'm, I'm sure you can just tell by looking at it it's very very well made it's got very fine teeth no issues at all with this torque wrench i mean they are great they have a one year warranty i believe and like i said they're 80 bucks you really can't go wrong compared to what you would spend on a matco or a snap-on like this they're a lot more expensive and this thing just even in your hand it just feels like a very nice tool and then this is my most recent. This is a snap-on. Um, I bought this about a month ago. I finally upgraded because this torque wrench pretty much eliminates these torque wrenches and what I'm gonna show you after this. But this is my new snap-on. It is digital and you just turn it on. It's a 3 8 head with 80 tooth. And this is basically the exact same head that are on my other ratchets. And you know, if something happens to it, they can take the head off, put the new one on, and you're ready to go. It does, there you go, foot pounds. It does inch pounds. Foot pounds is zero to 100, or five to 100, I should say. Inch pounds goes to 1200, I believe. And then it's got Newton meters. I'm not sure what the kilogram, I think it's kilogram dash C, I'm not sure, don't use it. And DNM, don't use that either. And this is a great little unit. And another reason I liked it is this right here. I don't have to actually, let's see. Hopefully that's picking that up. Oh, hang on, let me set it still for a second. When it's doing the angle, you gotta set it still, there we go. It does angles, so you can go 21 degrees. You can go, you know, 360 degrees basically, and one degree increments. And that is great on, I used it just last week on a, on a flywheel and clutch plate because 
on on GMs for some reason. Okay, let's just start over. Domestic vehicles for some reason, when they give you torque specs on cylinder heads or clutch uh, clutches and stuff like that, like the one I did, it was a Chevy Camaro, it was a '96 or '97, something like that, and it said 15 pounds on the first pass, and then it was something stupid like 55 degrees on your second pass. Well, thank goodness I had this. This set it to 55. You know, and I knew exactly where I needed to be. And let me show you, let me lower this. Let me show you what this thing does. I gotta put it at a pounds that I can actually get with my hands. Let's see if I can get it close enough. As you're going up, lights up, and then it beeps and vibrates. There's no clicking like a normal torque wrench. I'll do it again. And then you stop. But what I'm saying, going back to the angle thing, is that's the American-made cars for some reason, or American brand, I shouldn't say. Most American brand cars aren't made here in America, most of them. But your Japanese vehicles, they'll give you two torque specs. They'll give you, let's just say, and this is just for instance, they'll say 45 foot-pounds in the first pass on like a cylinder head bolt, and then 60 pounds for the final torque down. That's so easy to do. Because before I bought this, I had to use an angle gauge. And if anybody's ever used one of these, they don't work the greatest. You basically set set it at zero, and hope I'm getting this in the screen. You set it at zero, which is right there. And then you clamp this onto something so it won't move. Like I said, it doesn't work very well. And then your half inch socket goes here, your half inch ratchet, whatever you're using, whatever you're using goes up here. And then you just take it around to whatever degree, I'm sorry, I'm not getting this in there, whatever degree you're supposed to have and that's it. So, like I said, the snap-on replaces basically all three of these and it replaces the need to have an angle meter and, have, and you know the torque wrench setup that doesn't work very well and you know that this is accurate, but I still need my half inch for lug nuts, uh, cylinder head bolts. I bought this in 3 8 because I use a 3 8 torque wrench more then I would use a half inch. I had, I traded in on this one, I traded in a an older Snap-on 3 8 torque wrench that was probably half the size of this, you know, about like that. And I used that thing for a long, long time. And I had to have it rebuilt once, the head rebuilt, I had to send it and have it calibrated. But it was an old one and the lock ring was right here Man, I wish I still had it because I used it all the time. The lock ring was right here and it broke. So every time I'd set my torque and I'd go and start torquing, what would happen? Twist your hand as you're torquing and my torques weren't right. So I decided that I just upgraded to 3 8 I was using that a lot more. I do, at the shop where I work, I do most of the time belt jobs. And most time belt jobs, your tensioner, uh, your idler pulleys, everything like that is usually inch pounds. Yes, you can convert it to torque pounds or torque foot pounds but I just like using the inch pounds like um, GM 5.3 water pumps those are in inch pounds those those four bolts there on the two corners they give it to you in inch pounds and I use my inch pounds all the time that little torque wrench it was just it was a great little piece but it broke uh, they it was gonna be hundred and seventy five dollars to fix it so I traded it in he gave me hundred seventy five dollars trade in on it and then I just bought this snap on right here so that's my torque wrenches and that's basically, these are the ones I leave at home. These are the two that I keep at work. Torque wrenches are a, a, a very important tool if you're a mechanic. Uh, ask any mechanic, they use torque wrenches quite often, especially on important pieces of a car like intake manifolds or timing belts, water pumps, head gaskets, you know, cylinder heads going back on. If you do a head gasket job or anything like that, uh, transmission pan bolts sometimes I'll use a torque wrench, sometimes I won't. Just for instance, if I get a transmission service job where I replace the filter and a fluid, and it's not a reusable gasket, because GMs have reusable gaskets, but if it's not a reusable gasket, they usually send a stupid rubber gasket. I like cork gaskets better, but they send a rubber gasket. And if you go and you torque that to factory spec, that rubber gasket's actually gonna squeeze out, that transmission pan's gonna leak. So I don't torque then. So what I do, and I'm gonna show you what I do, this is not a torque wrench, this is a little quarter inch ratchet, my little quarter inch ratchet. I'll put like three fingers on it and I'll run every bolt up until my three fingers can't go any tighter, if that makes sense. Or sometimes I'll even just put two fingers on it. I'll sit there and I'll just run it up 
until you know all around the pan until I can't go any tighter with it because if you sit out here and you do this you're probably gonna end up breaking it or you're gonna make that rubber gasket you know come out and you're gonna have a leak I like to use personally like to use torque wrenches because it gives me peace of mind especially on timing belt jobs I know that I didn't over torque the let's say the idler pulley or tensioner the idler pulley I didn't over torque it so that that bearing gets hot smokes the bearing belt comes off bends all the valves valves drop down pistons come up bends the valves then I'm in, a, I'm in a world of hurt with my boss or if I under torque it I don't I don't get it tight enough then that bolt's going to come out over time it's going to come out pulley's going to fall off belt's going to come off same thing valves come down pistons come up I liked it the peace of mind and it's also another thing where if, if a car comes in after I did let's say a water pump the GM water pumps I always torque if it comes back in and it's leaking my boss says you know, what'd you, what'd you do? Why is that leaking? I, I torqued the bolts exactly to factory spec, just like it tells me. We use Mitchell on, on Mitchell. It gives me factory specs. I torque each bolt that way. It saves my butt um, in situations. Now, that's never happened, but if it ever does happen, then I know that I'm okay. So that that's why I, I think torque wrenches are very important pieces, very vital roles in a mechanics job. And if you're a home do-it-yourselfer, those little Harbor Freight torque wrenches, they work perfectly fine if you're doing valve cover gaskets or if you're doing your own cylinder head or time belt i think they're fine they're they're pretty accurate i don't think that they're dead on but they're they're really close and no issues at all i used them for a long time and that cobalt definitely highly recommend that if you do a lot of wrenching at home that is a great great torque wrench and very well made very well made it's i mean it looks just like and i'm not comparing it to snap-on it looks just like snap-ons torque wrench that's just like that i know they're not made in the same factory because snap-on makes their own torque wrenches down in tennessee i think where the ratchets are made i think don't hold me to that i think it's not elizabeth town or something like that tennessee and cobalt's probably china made and i'm hang on a sec let's just find out because i've never paid attention uh let's see Well, oh well, I'm not going to go through that manual just to find out. But most likely it probably is, or, tai or Taiwan. A lot of tools are made in Taiwan, uh, especially like macro and stuff like that. And I like my American-made tools, but that is not a deal breaker when it comes to me buying tools. And then the snap one, for the, for the professional mechanic like me, that is a great investment. I mean, I'm going to use that thing for years and years and years. It's just a great investment. Now, let me give you a tip. If you own one of those snap-on electronic torque wrenches, my, my dealer... When he, when he came and I bought the torque wrench off of him, he told me when I'm not using it to take the batteries out, which, man, it's, it's not a deal breaker either. But he said that what he's seeing is people are leaving their batteries in it, and as the batteries are getting older, they're swelling up, and they can't get the batteries out of it. So if you own one of those, just in case, it would happen to you. Take your batteries out every time. That's what I do every time I use it. Once I go to put it back in the case, take the batteries out, lay the batteries in there next to it, and that's pretty much it. So that's my torque wrenches. I want to do a video on that. And I think I might do a toolbox tour because I got to take my tools back to work today because I got to go work tomorrow. And maybe I'll just take the camera along with me and do a, a separate, separate video of a toolbox tour. So we will see you next time.